Give it up for Amalia. All right, you guys. Hey, how y'all doing? Good afternoon. Um, as my comrade most stated, my name is Amalia Livingston. I'm a Jackson, Mississippi native, 22 years old. Um, and I am, I've been a long time member of Cooperation Jackson since like the, since the very beginning. Um, and I've believed in the vision and like just sustainable communities and um, building like a system of reparations for ourselves without having to ask permission for it, right? So, so, um, thank you. So, Cooperation Jackson um, in the Community Production Cooperative um, that I am a co-anchor of. I am a co-anchor of this initiative along with my, my homeboy, Jossie Williams, who is Collie Williams' little brother. Um, and we are helping to build a transition city. So, this is me, my bio. Don't worry about that. I'll tell you more about myself, myself. Um, so, I'm 22. I am the second oldest of five children. Um, we're all Jackson, Mississippi natives, born and raised, straight out the mud. Um, and I graduated from Pearl High School, top of my class. Um, and the interesting way that I got involved with Cooperation Jackson full term is that I got a text message on my phone. I was working at Xerox in a call center. And Ia's text message um, popped up on my phone and she was like, yo, call me when you get a chance. And she left me a voicemail. That voicemail informed me that they had an opportunity for me to go to Detroit, Michigan for three and a half months. The winter of 2017, 2017-2016, um, and that was the groundbreaking of me having the courage enough to leave like the status quo corporate world and go into like this, this huge endeavor of like building my own and what that defines for me as like self-sustainability and doing what I love. Um, and, and, and in that, like that's how I got involved. I went up to Detroit, Michigan, um, and I was submersed in digital fabrication manufacturing, had never done it before. <laughs> Math was never my strong suit, <laughs> um, and manufacturing and engineering was never my was never my calling until I until I had this experience and Cooperation Jackson gave me that opportunity to do that. Um, so Insight Focus, Blair Evans is my mentor, um, and I was allowed to go up to Detroit, Michigan, given the opportunity to go up there and learn about this awesome technology where 3D printing um, and electronics production, milling machines, and and like just you name it is is producing some awesome things. So just before we get too deep into everything, I just wanted to give you guys a couple key terms. Um, the first one is digital fabrication, which you've heard me say before, um, is a type of manufacturing process where the designs created and machines used are controlled by computer. Um, the means of production um, is defined for me as like the facilities and resources for producing goods um, and whatever medium that you use to do that with. Um, so it could be like claying or um, art mediumship or whatnot. Um, a medium of exchange is intermediary tool used to facilitate the trade of goods. Um, it must represent a standard of value and recognized by all parties involved. So the one mean of medium of exchange that most of us may know about is like the, the dollar, right? Or the euro or whatnot. So just kind of shifting the narrative from the dollar and like US currency being a medium of exchange to like time and, and people and the energy and resources that we put in on a daily basis being that medium, right? So. These are some of the products that digital fabrication and manufacturing can produce. Um, so when we talk about digital fabrication, which is one of the terms that we spoke on um, on this slide, um, you basically use a, use a computer to communicate to machines a design process. So this laptop stand, um, which are like keep your legs from burning up, right? <laughs> if you sit the laptop on your lap. Um, this stand was produced by like a laser cutter machine when like you, you communicate the design on a CAD program, which is computer aided design on a CAD program and you send it to that laser cutter machine and it cuts the material out for you. Um, this is what you call subtractive design um, or subtractive manufacturing um, where the, you subtract 
the machine itself subtracts the, um, the materials that are not needed and leaves what you need, right? So that's one dope process. Um, this computer cart slash um, like plant housing nursery scenario. Uh, <laughs> yeah, y'all, this is Google. This isn't my project specifically. I had pictures, but they all got lost. Um, and my old phone. But this is one project that um, we had considered going ahead and going through with the design on. Um, and this is also like a, a subtractive manufacturing project um, that digital fabrication, like, it's literally just as, as far as your imagination can take you, that's like what you can produce, right? And all it is is really just having a solid understanding of what these machines and what the technology can do. And if you can communicate it to the computer and to the machine, you got it, right? So it's, it's some pretty dope, some pretty dope things that are being produced. Um, with this machinery. So a lot of my pictures are missing, sorry y'all. Um, so this diagram here is kind of a breakdown of like where the CPC fits in the model of CJ. So our mission statement, Cooperation Jackson's mission statement, it was um, formulated from the Jackson Cush plan. The Jackson Cush plan has three pillars. But three of those pillars are, one of those pillars are economic solidarity or the solidarity economy, um, independent political politics, and people's assemblies. Um, that, in theory, is like the, the formula to create like a sustainable community and to empower people to like have the reparations and to kind of just give it to themselves and just empower people to, to have a voice um, and to have sustainable cities, solidarity cities, fabrication cities where they're producing their own goods, right? That's where the CPC fits in and to the big puzzle um, and human rights cities where like you stand up for what you believe in and you send policy, um, independent policy to like the big dogs and they make the decisions for you, right? And you hold those folks accountable. Um, and there was another slide on the other side. It might come up. It, it's not coming up. All right, so these are just a couple cool memes, but I'm gonna just kind of go into the breakdown. <laughs> go into the breakdown of like what the community production center means for me. Um, so when I think of like community production and like taking over the means of production, seizing the means of production, what that means for me, and especially in a ambitious project like the Jackson Cush Plan, is that especially when it's um, black and brown people that are taking this initiative to stand up for themselves and for what they believe in and get their own, um, you have to pretty much be prepared to be put in exile to a certain extent, right? So when you have the means of production and the, and the ability produ to produce things yourself and on your own, for your own, um, that gives you like a certain level of autonomy. Um, and a, certain, and a level of autonomy that we need and we have to be taken into consideration about, right? So like this level of technology is very simple to learn. As I stated, I had never done this type of thing before in my life. <laughs> um, and I can pretty much crank out a lot of, a lot of things that like I can use around the house. Um, I've created like rings when I was up in Detroit, Michigan. Um, it was my first time ever being that far up north ever in my life. Um, and a lot of the stigma that was around Detroit was like very high crime and you have to watch out for yourself and you're a female and you have to protect yourself, right? So a lot of the orientation that I had around Detroit was very stigmatizing um, and it, it wasn't very healthy for me personally. So one of the first projects that I did when I got to the Fab Lab um, Insight Focus in Detroit was that I produced a ring and that ring had four spikes on it that fit perfectly in between my fingers. And I ran a lot. I was doing cardio. Can't tell now, because I stopped. But I was doing it, okay? Don't, don't question me, all right? So I was doing cardio, and I did it where the ring fit perfectly between my fingers, and it was 3D printed, so the plastic is extremely hard. Um, and like I was able to fit it in between my fingers, so when I was running, it felt like it was just a regular old ring, but if anybody approached me that I didn't know, like I could do a real solid jab to the face. So it was like the equivalent, <laughs> it was the equivalent to, um, to I guess uh, like brass knuckles, but it was plastic, right? So it, <laughs> it was pretty dope. And um, I hate I lost all my pictures, y'all, but I promise I can pull some up. If y'all wanna come and talk to me afterwards, I'll be more than happy to pull those pictures up for you. Um, I've created jewelry. Um, 
things for my mom. I, I made her a jewelry box. So I mean, like this technology is pretty dynamic in what it can do. Um, there are people producing micro and tiny houses, um, cement printing, 3D printing modules. Like it's, this technology is off the chain. Um, and I'm just so happy that I have the opportunity to like be in a space where like I'm, I'm hearing people talk about these radical ideas and hearing people talk about like the ideas that they have for water purification systems and, and how to like keep people from getting sick and a lot of times like what I think about is how I can fit that into the model of um, community production and digital fabrication because it's so extensive that all you need to know how to do is like how to program the machine to do what you need it to do and it can execute it so like around water purification um, there are a couple people out that are doing projects around that and like how can we how can we make that on a macro scale so that everyone could have access to it right um, so those are conversations that we're in um, those are dialogues that we're in conversations around is like how can we even like have decentralized internet um, for people who don't have access to it like in rural areas that's one thing that's really big in Mississippi right now um, is a lot of rural areas do not have access to internet and like libraries are closing and that's a really big problem. So like we're trying to figure out how to decentralize that and um, let me think. So um, sustainable communities um, and reparations, of course, when, when you're talking about the Jackson Cush plan and in relation to the five contiguous states, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, um, and like how they are in relation to like the Mississippi River Jackson in particular. Um, there are a lot of different aspects as to like why the Jackson Cush plan was, was created and designed to be in that specific area of the South. Um, one of those reasons is because like black folks already had an understanding of like self-determination and self-defense um, and to like keep, keep their families safe. That's one thing that you are, when you're doing a radical project such as this ambitious project like the Jackson Kutch Plan, um, you have to have people who already kind of have that orientation, right? So that's one of the reasons why Jackson specifically was, was chosen for this project and for this initiative, right? So I'm just, I'm privileged to be in this space. Thank you all so much for listening. Once again, um, this is my first time ever, ever doing something this big. So thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. I feel so much love, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, y'all please hit me up. I'm a ball of nerves right now. I promise I got so much more to talk about. So hit me up afterwards. I'll be more than happy to chop it up with you. Okay, cool.